of the United States. Now, you know they're not going to have their best people in a lottery because they're not going to put their best people in a lottery. They don't want to have their good people leave. So we get these people, and then you'll have, like, the incident we had on the West Side Highway. In New York. Where this guy who comes in through chain migration and visa lottery runs over and kills eight people and badly injures. You know, nobody ever talks about all of the people, whether it's the school or on the West Side Highway. People that go out to put themselves in shape, and they end up losing legs and arms. Nobody ever talks about the people that are so horribly hurt and injured. But this guy runs his truck into people, killed eight people and injured many, and he came in through the system. Well, I don't want that. I want people to come in ultimately. We want people to come in through merit. And, I, and you know, we're going to need merit. We need people to come in to our country because we have so many companies now moving in because of the regulations yeah. and because of what we did with the massive tax cuts, which is great for the companies, and they're going to hire the people – that we're going to need people to take care of the company. So, but we want wow. people based on merit, not based on the fact that they're thrown into a bin. And many of those people are not the people you want in the country, believe me. Well, clearly, clearly. And uh, if we were to have a parade, I'm stuck on the parade. When do you think we can have this parade? Because I want to go well, to the I parade. Well, I guess we're talking about probably Veterans Day. It's just preliminarily, you know, being mm -hmm. discussed. But we're talking about probably Veterans Day. I like July 4th because July 4th in Washington, D.C. would be beautiful. Yes. It would be down up and down Pennsylvania Avenue. A lot mm -hmm. of it would be flyovers. I was at the Bastille Day Parade in France with the president of France. Very good guy. Oh. Okay. And uh, it, was, it was quite something. And frankly, I think it's great for spirit. Uh, the military loves it. They love the idea. It would have our... West Point and Annapolis and the Air Force Academy, Coast Guard Academy, and would have uh, just, it would be a great representative parade, would have a lot of plane flyovers. I think it would be something great for the spirit of the country. You know, uh, we have a great country and we should be celebrating our country. So we'll see if we can do it at a reasonable cost. And if we can't, we won't do it. But the generals would love to do it, I can tell you, and so would I. I think it's great for our country in terms of uh, being a cheerleader and the spirit is very important. Hello? M Mr. President? Yes. Yeah, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Let me ask you finally, the mainstream media, they don't seem to be ending their attacks on you. And yet, as your approval rating is soaring and as you do all, make all these accomplishments, do you think at some point they have to give in? I think what they're going to do is six months before the election in 2020, they're going to all endorse me and they're going to be so nice because if they don't have me, their ratings are going to die and they're all going to go out of business, okay? <laughs> you know, they get good ratings because of whatever is going on. I mean, because of me. And I think what happens is I'm sure they'll all endorse. You know, I'm being a little sarcastic when I say yes. that, but uh, <laughs> I expect them all to endorse me and cherish me right up until that point. And then probably after I win, they'll go after me again. But uh, their ratings are good. I will say Fox ratings are phenomenal. CNN yes. has not been doing well. Right. MSNBC is now in second place over CNN, right. but Fox is beating everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, you people have been very fair. Not good. You've been very fair to me. That's all I ask Thank for you. is fairness. No, I call it fake news. There's so much fake news, Janine. It's just incredible. It is. It is. And finally, Ivanka, have you, uh, Ivanka, have you heard from her? I have. She's uh, working hard. She's doing a great job. You know Ivanka very well. There, there is no better representative that we can have go over to a pretty tough place right now in the world. It's South Korea. She's over at the Olympics, and she's with the president of South Korea. And right. You have North Korea surrounding her, and uh, it's a very interesting situation. So I have spoken to her. Uh, we cannot have a better, smarter representative. Well, Mr. President, I can't thank you enough for calling into justice. We are very honored that you did so. Congratulations on, on your approval ratings on CPAC and on all of the successes that you've had. My viewers are just thrilled that you came on to justice. Thank you again. Well, I love your viewers. I want to tell you, you do, and I do too. And congratulations you. on your success because I did look at your ratings over the last couple of weeks, and you're doing fantastically. And, thank you. And so is, uh, so is our friend Ward.
Waters, our Waters yeah. world, man. He's doing great also. And yes. your whole Saturday Night Live, what you guys, Greg, what you guys have done is pretty amazing. But I, I, I did look at how well you're doing, and I want to congratulate you. you, Janine. Great Thank job. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. We're honored. All right. Next, more on the developing story of the day, the Democrats' big reveal, or was it? Catherine Herridge and the Hill Executive Vice President John Solomon join me next to break down the Democrats' memo. Justice rolls on in a moment. Live from America's news headquarters, I'm Robert Gray. The United Nations Security Council taking a rare unified stance on the conflict in Syria. It unanimously approved a resolution demanding a 30-day ceasefire in Syria to occur, quote, without delay. The resolution did not include an explicit time frame. A proposed three-day deadline was watered down to garner support from Russia, Syria's ally. Now, this comes after a week of airstrikes on rebel-held suburbs of Damascus, leaving hundreds of civilians dead. The NRA is in hot water following the recent Florida school shooting that left 17 students and teachers dead. A number of corporations are severing ties with the gun lobby group, including some major airlines and car rental agencies. The NRA responded today, calling it a, quote, shameful display of political and civic cowardice. I'm Robert Gray. Now back to Justice with Judge Janine. Breaking tonight, the Democrats' counter memo on alleged government surveillance abuses has been released. And the fallout has just begun. Chief Intelligence Correspondent uh, Catherine Harris joins me here in D.C. with the latest, along with investigative journalist and ex executive VP at the Hill, John Solomon. All right, good evening, guys. We, uh, we don't have a lot of time, but Karen, uh, Catherine, uh, first of all, the president uh, was very complimentary of you, uh, and we all agree. But what's your takeaway from this memo? Okay, so really the Democrats are asking folks to focus on the details and, and the trees and not the forest, the overall picture. One of the central findings in the Republican memo is that the fact the dossier was funded by the DNC and Clinton campaign was never shared with this surveillance court when they went and got a warrant for this Trump campaign aid. The Democrats don't take on that point directly in this memo. What they say is that the court was told that it was politically motivated and they shielded the identities of the individuals because they say that's a common practice for them to protect sources and methods from a judge that's a common practice this, this I've the, never heard there. of that well you raised an important point about the FISA court which is an ex parte court which means right. that there's a special responsibility on the government to provide as much visibility to the judges as possible so folks at home will have to decide whether calling it a politically motivated document was appropriate or whether they should have gone that extra step to mm -hmm. say it was the DNC and the Clinton campaign F final point if I could so the Democrats say that elements of the Trump dossier were corroborated by multiple sources and it's in this section of the memo you can see right. it's heavily blacked out so right. we don't know what it was exactly however I think there's a conflict here because Director Comey testified to the Senate Intelligence Committee last year that when he briefed the incoming president at Trump Tower in January of 2017 mm -hmm. that the dossier at that time was still unverified and salacious so this is three it months is, after the application that the Democrats say. So you it swear was to a court mm -hmm. that this is uh, reliable, and then you go to Congress and say it's not. Anyway, John Solomon uh, with the Hill. Uh, you guys have been breaking unbelievable stuff in, uh, in, uh, in the on the Hill. In the Hill, what's your takeaway from this Democrat memo? Yeah. I think Catherine has it right. You know, we were all as reporters looking forward to this, and it doesn't turn out to be a very evidentiary document. It, it turns out to be more of a political document, laying out an argument, but not putting a lot of new evidence. There's no new evidence of collusion. We still have no evidence in the public domain of collusion, right? Uh, we, we, there's no challenging to the fact that they withheld from the court the identity, uh, uh, the fact that the DNC and Clinton campaign paid for the primary evidence they used to surveil Carter Page. Here's another omission. Uh, we learned this just in the last couple of days. The FBI interviewed Carter Page in 2013. He voluntarily helped an investigation involving some Russians who were later convicted. And in 2015, they intercepted information saying that Carter Page, uh, the Russians didn't find Carter Page, the derogatory information where the Russians said they didn't think Carter Page was very useful to them. You would think they would tell that to the court if they're now asking them to surveil him in 2016, and they leave that out, just like they leave out the DNC and Clinton connections. I think when you look at all this, the FBI and the DOJ look a little bit like that 17-year-old 
year-old son that sneaks out of your house Saturday night. He gets busted when he comes back, and Dad says, what did yeah. you have to drink tonight? And I said, I had a Coca-Cola. You don't tell him you had five beers. They're leaving well, out really important information. Well, John, from the, the whole idea that, that Carter Page helped the FBI in 2013 is news to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is it news? It, I mean, no, that's right. There was a, there was a counterintelligence investigation based in New York City, and Carter Page was one of the targets of these Russian spies. But <sighs> Carter Page then agreed to become a cooperating witness, and his testimony was used to secure a prosecution to and a conviction. The FBI, that's correct. and and they they didn't tell this to the court. Instead, they wanted to surveil him. That's unbelievable. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of questions that still need to be answered about this. How thorough is the FBI and the DOJ okay. in front of this court? Okay, but, the, but the one thing that jumped out at me is they do say that after they got the surveillance warrant of Carter Page, there was additional intelligence that was gathered that was credible enough that allowed the surveillance court to renew yeah. the applications multiple times. And we don't know what that information is. Because they it's haven't told out. us. Well, it's blacked out. You, can, you know, you can't really make an okay. independent assessment. All right. Catherine Harris, John Solomon, I don't mean to rush, but thank you so thank much you. for being with us tonight. And our panel's ready to break down the interview with the president, plus the release of the memo has them primed for a fiery debate. Katrina Pearson and former Hillary Clinton advisor Richard Goodstein standing by. You can't miss this. Of those children, right. that coach who was